Hey folks, glad you could be here. Uh, if you're first time joining us, welcome. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Uh, we're going to do uh, several different topics today. We've got a lot to cover today. Uh, so if you're new to the show, the way we do this is we do two 24-minute segments. So what does that look like? I talk for 24 minutes. You type in questions, whatever platform you're on. We're on a bunch of different platforms. Type in your questions, uh, any health question at all. It doesn't have to be related to what we're talking about. At the end of 24 minutes, Joe, my producer, the man behind the camera, will then read me your questions that you typed in. I will answer them. Then we do another 24-minute segment, and then we answer questions again. So this is your opportunity to get advice uh, and share it with other people too. So many people say I don't have any outlet to ask my questions. Now you do. That's what this show is all about. So we're ready to roll, roll whenever you are. Joe, ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am very happy you're here. We've got a lot to cover today. We've got a lot of topics we have to cover today. Um, so we're going to first talk about is there such a thing as low-carb potatoes? The answer is yes. Supplements and autism. I see so many patients coming in with autistic children, patients coming in autistic themselves. There's one supplement specifically that seems to help dramatically with autism. Others don't. This one does. If you're a pain patient, if you've ever been in pain, how does that affect your weight? We're going to talk about how that affects the brain. Uh, cholesterol. Cholesterol is bad. Oxidized cholesterol, substantially worse. You don't even know what oxidized cholesterol is, and yet I bet you're eating it every day. And then if we have time, I'm not sure if we're going to. We've got a lot to cover here. Uh, we're going to talk about how your immune system is being beaten up by foods and chemicals in the environment. Because I'm getting a lot of questions about immunity again. It kind of faded out for a while. I'm getting a lot of questions about immunity. I want to cover that too. So, all right. So the big question is, is there such a thing as a low-carb potato? And the answer is yes. Now, it's a regular potato. But it has to be prepared a certain way. So white potatoes, just plain old white potato, has a high what's called glycemic index. And the glycemic index is the consumption, uh, if you eat these foods, it increases your risk of diabetes. So what that means is when you eat it, it raises your blood sugar. That's glycemic index. Now, normally after a meal, you want your blood sugars to gently go up and then gently come back down again. But with high glycemic foods, like let's say potatoes, uh, you get an exaggerated blood sugar spike, and that leads your body to overcompensate by releasing insulin. So you eat something that's high glycemic, sugar, potatoes. Sugar goes up. Body dumps insulin into the body. Insulin goes into the cells and opens up the cells to allow the sugar to be utilized by the cell as fuel. So insulin is like a key. It opens up things. Now, what happens is if you eat a lot of high sugar foods, you produce a lot of insulin, eventually the cells become insulin resistant. What does that mean? The cells can only take in so much sugar before they say, I can't take anymore. It's going to gunk up the works. I got to stop taking it. So if you keep producing a lot of insulin, the cells, try, uh, the insulin is trying to open up the cells and let the sugar in, and the cells finally say, I can't take any more. Stop it. And it stops it, and now the sugar builds up in your blood. So you become insulin resistant. The cells resist the insulin, raising your blood sugar, and we call that type 2 diabetes. So my mother always said, if you eat too much sugar, you'll get diabetes. She was right. She didn't understand why. But yes, she was absolutely right. So potatoes spike your blood sugar, and that's a problem. We're going to tell you how to prepare them so you have a dramatically lower reaction to them. So raise your blood sugar, insulin's released, force your blood sugars um, to lower, and then you have to get started all over again. Potatoes are a good source of potassium, vitamin C, polyphenols, nutrients, fiber. But as your blood sugar goes up, that raises triglycerides. Because what happens is your body can only process so much sugar. Any excess sugar has to go into the liver. The liver converts the sugar into glycogen. Glycogen is where we store sugar. It's our reserve tank. Once you fill up all the glycogen stores, and there's no place else to put it, your body has to take that glycogen or that sugar, convert it into triglycerides, and then store it as fat. So this is how sugar turns into fat. Sugar is utilized. Anything not utilized gets turned to glycogen. If it's not used as glycogen, it converts into triglycerides. Triglycerides get stored as fat. So if you come to me and you say, Dr. Joe, I have high triglycerides, it's because you're eating too much carbohydrates. It's very simple. And so what do we do? We have to lower the carbohydrate intake. 
I had that one time a while ago. I remember I uh, went and got blood work, and I had high triglycerides. And I thought, why do I have high triglycerides? That was really weird. And I thought, of course, what did I eat the night before? And the night before, I had a big uh, high glycemic meal. And so that's why my triglycerides were high. I straightened out my diet again. I had my blood work done again. Triglycerides were normal. So I, if I see somebody with high cholesterol, high triglycerides, I might say, I'm going to put you on medication to lower your triglycerides. What if we just stop causing the triglycerides to be high, getting to the cause of the problem, not just treating the symptoms? Make sense? Yeah. So potatoes can do that. It'll spike your blood sugar, raise your triglycerides, and it becomes a big issue. So there's bad side to potatoes because it spikes your blood sugar, and there's a good side because it has a lot of vitamins and minerals and nutrients and polyphenols and fiber. And so by eating potatoes, it doesn't necessarily help your health or hurt your health. It kind of balances out. But if we could lower that glycemic index, you get all the benefits without the raising the blood sugar and the, the negative effects. And the way we do this is really simple. You need to cook your potatoes and put them in a the refrigerator overnight. By chilling your potatoes, you lower the glycemic index even if you reheat them the next day. So from now on, I don't want you eating fresh cooked potatoes. I want you to cook them, put them in the refrigerator overnight, eat them the next day. So this will reduce the impact. We're not sure why, uh, but it changed it. Well, it changed the molecular structure. We know why. Other things you can do to reduce the glycemic index, add broccoli. If you eat two servings of cooked broccoli with your mashed potatoes, immediately cut the insulin demand by 40%. So another reason to eat your vegetables. In contrast, let's assume you have chicken breast with your potatoes. Makes it substantially worse. And if you have tuna fish with your potatoes, doubles the amounts of insulin that's being pumped out. So another reason why you want to stay away from animal proteins, because they spike your blood sugar. Even though they're proteins, they're spiking the blood sugar. So why does protein, plant protein work and animal protein not work? It's because of something called branched-chain amino acids. When you decrease the consumption of branched-chain amino acids, it improves your metabolic health. Now, if you worked out or if you work out, you might hear supplements saying you need more branched-chain amino acids. You need those to build muscle mass. Well, there may be an upside, but there's a way bigger downside. The way to build muscle mass is to put stress on a muscle. Now, you have to eat right and give the body the nutrients. I understand that. But the biggest question I got, I've been getting it for years, is, Dr. Joe, you don't eat meat. Say it with me. Where do you get your protein from? Well, your body only needs about 8 to 10% of its total caloric intake as protein. Anything beyond that is wasted and puts stress on your kidneys and your liver. It's too much, and it stimulates something called the MTOR pathway, which can cause cancer cells to form. I mean, there's a million reasons why you shouldn't be eating animal proteins. So if you're eating a steak, which is about 18% protein, all that extra protein is putting stress on the body. So you don't need more protein. Most people need less protein. And if you're eating good food, you're getting quality protein, less protein, and that's not going to have an effect on the kidneys. For example... If you eat animal protein, it can, it can really tear up your kidneys if you're in kidney failure. Plant protein, no effect whatsoever. So when people come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I have kidney failure. What do I do? Cut out your animal proteins immediately. Not a, not a little, not sometimes, not tomorrow. Now. Take the stress off the kidneys so that the kidneys can stop getting beat up. But I digress. I'm talking about potato today. So simply chilling your potatoes cuts down the blood sugar and insulin spikes but to get significant drops in both, you can not only chill the potatoes and eat them the next day, but add a tablespoon of vinegar. Vinegar will drop your insulin spike by another 30 to 40%. So you're on a diet, you can't eat potatoes, you're going nuts, you want to eat potatoes, here's how you do it. Cook it, cool it, eat it the next day, have a tablespoon of vinegar with the meal, and that is if you just added plain white distilled vinegar. I like raw organic apple cider vinegar. It has more health benefits. Vinegar itself, is it vinegar or is it just the acidity? So in a test tube, they took lemon juice and that appeared to block the star uh, remarkable starch blocking effects. Uh, but you didn't know if it worked in people. We did it in people. It worked. Lemon juice worked too. You know, a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice with your potatoes worked as well. 
but nothing worked as well as vinegar. It's more potent, just one or two tablespoons of vinegar. You could dilute it with water if you want to, put it, mix it in with your food. Can significantly improve short and long-term blood sugar control of diabetes. Uh, and that's why a lot of clinicians are telling people to, well, a lot of smart clinicians are telling people to incorporate vinegar as part of their dietary plan for diabetics. So I just solved a lot of problems for you for weight gain, spiking your blood sugar, high triglycerides, and you get, back, get to eat some foods that you like. Now, whenever I eat a food that grows underground, I always want to make sure it's organic, potatoes, carrots, onions. Uh, I try to do as much organic as possible anyway but especially anything that grows underground because the soil is saturated with a lot of toxic chemicals if it's not organic in most cases. So real simple thing you could do. And it doesn't matter how you eat the potato. It was mashed, it was baked, it was cubed. However, as long as it's cooled, eaten the next day, add a little vinegar to it, you'll be amazed. So there's my fun tip for the day. I want to talk about autism because, changing subjects, by the way, I see so many patients with autism. And I was having dinner with someone very special the other day, and somehow autism came up. And she said, have you seen an increase in autism since you've been in practice? And my answer was a resounding yes. I've seen crazy spikes in autistic people. Now, a couple of things to play devil's advocate, I always look at the other side, is that we're better diagnosing it. The better we are at diagnosing something, the more likely we are to find positive findings. So it used to be just autism. Now there's autism spectrum. Okay, there's Asperger's, there's autism. And so you can fall on what's called the spectrum. And a lot of people fall on the spectrum because it incorporates a lot more things. So yeah, if we can say only this is autism, you're going to have X amount of people having it. If we could say this, 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 and this are autism, it's going to increase the amount. But I've seen so – when I first got in practice 37 years ago – very seldom, I don't think ever, I saw children coming in with severe autism. And I'm seeing it more and more. And it breaks my heart when these little kids come in, and some of them are so severe that they, they can't speak. Uh, you can't communicate with them. They throw fits. They throw themselves against the wall. They hit their head against the wall. It breaks my heart. And so I thought, what do we do for patients like this? So what I've done in the past is, of course, chiropractic care is very helpful to get the nervous system working in all patients. Uh, you, me, autistic patients, Down syndrome patients, anybody, you want to get the nervous system working. Now, with Down syndrome patients, just make sure you don't uh, get doctors to give hard adjustments in the neck. Uh, because with Down syndrome patients, sometimes uh, the atlantoaxial ligament, the ligament in your neck, uh, doesn't form as well as it does with somebody without Downs. Just a side note, going off on a tangent here. So with autism, chiropractic care, getting them off, off the junk food, uh, getting them on good supplements, it seemed to help a little bit. And in some cases, I got some really good results with it. And I wasn't quite sure why some cases were getting better results than others. So I didn't put this all together, but somebody smarter than me did. And I realized I was doing it by accident. I didn't mean to do it with some of my autistic patients, but the results were great. So vitamin C, vitamin D, omega-3, fish oils, all of these were put to the test. And we wanted to see who would get the best results or which ones would get the best results. So scientists put together studies, and dietary supplements were commonly given to people with autism. I gave it to my patients with autism. One of the most common was omega-3 fatty acids because we thought omega-3 fatty acids good for the brain. I thought that too. And so they did some studies. And they found that children with autism had very low omega-3 fatty acid levels in their blood. Now, was it the low omega-3s causing autism, or was it the autism, which could have led to low omega-3s, because autistic children were picky eaters, and chances are they weren't eating foods that were high in omega-3 fatty acids. So they did the test, six months of two, 200 milligrams a day, of, uh, a day of one of the omega-3 fatty acids called DHA, no effect. Some kids were taking it despite lack of evidence. Uh, maybe you just didn't give them enough. So they did another study with uh, 1,500 milligrams. So it went from 200 to 1,500 milligrams. High doses, no results. You put all the studies together, no results with omega-3. Now, you need omega-3 for other reasons, but we're talking here strictly about autism. Another study was done on vitamin C supplements for autistic children, and some kids got some results, some didn't. 
the bottom line was the, the results should not be interpreted as a blanket recommendation for vitamin C supplementation, especially at the large doses that they use. If you take large doses of vitamin C, a couple of things can happen. You increase your risk of kidney stones. A lot of people don't know that. See, I'm trying to be, get all the information I can give you on, on supplements. And also, too much uh, vitamin C can give you diarrhea. Bottom line, little evidence to support the use of this nutritional supplement in children with autism. But they said no supplements sh can help autism, but they left out one in the study. And that one was vitamin D. So vitamin D, there was clear evidence that vitamin D blood levels were significantly lower in children with autism than people who didn't have autism. Now, again, was it because they weren't outside as much? They had, they had autism. They were inside. They didn't get sunlight. They weren't eating supplemented foods. So vitamin D could have been a player, but we didn't know. So we did a test on it, and some promising reports started coming out. Uh, one two-year-old with autism had vitamin D deficiency. The autism improved with vitamin D supplementation. So we said, all right, we got to do a bigger study. They did 83 kids. 80% of the kids who took vitamin D supplementation improved their behavior, their eye contact, their attention span, and they concluded that vitamin D is an inexpensive, readily available, safe, and possibly effective war uh, supplement for children with autism. Now, not just children, adults. I think if we tested most people, they'd fall somewhere on the, on the autistic spectrum, autism spectrum. So another reason why I've always said vitamin D is the most effective, least expensive insurance policy you'll ever buy. It's the cheapest insurance policy you'll ever buy is taking vitamin D. So we don't know how much improvement there was until they did put it to a test. There's a bunch of variables as to why it worked. Because, you know, whenever I look at something, I always say, why does something work? Because I always want to get to the cause of the problem. Now, it could be that it improved DNA repair. It had anti-inflammatory uh, responses, mitochondrial protection. And so they did some randomized studies. They gave kids 5,000 international units of vitamin D a day. That's the dosage I recommend most pe all people take. Most people, I, I can't always say all, but most. Um, and they gave them a placebo and they gave them vitamin D. The drugs we have for autism really don't do much except deal with a couple of symptoms. And the kids, like giving kids sleeping pills because they weren't sleeping because they were autistic, well, that doesn't really treat anything. It just puts them to sleep. So the research groups around the world, they were looking for something better, and they found it with the vitamin D. The vitamin D supplementation reveals significant effects on core manifestations of autism, significant improvements in irritability, hyperactivity, and social withdrawals. And uh, uh, inappropriate speech, it also helped that, that area as well. And that was the first double-blind, randomized study ever done, and it worked. Now, if it's helping children or adults with autism, it can also have these same effects for you. It can help the mitochondria. It can help the, the DNA repair. It can act as anti-inflammatory. This is why I think everybody should be taking vitamin D. Now, I take 5,000 units a day. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? It's five drops of vitamin D. Now, on our website, drjoe.com, we have Dr. Joe's vitamin D supplement. A couple of things I want you to consider with vitamin D, and I've talked about this I know in the past, so if you've heard me say it before, I'm just saying it for the new listeners. If you take vitamin D, it does a lot of things. Mitochondria repair, anti-inflammatory, helps the brain function. But one of the things vitamin D does, it helps you absorb calcium. So if you're taking vitamin D, you can absorb calcium more efficiently. However, you need vitamin K2 to drive the calcium into the bones. So if you're just taking D3, you may, it may help other areas, but it may build up too much calcium inside what's called your soft tissues, your muscles, your blood vessels. So you want to take vitamin D3, not D2. Vitamin D3 is the natural form with vitamin K2. And on our website, drjoe.com, that's the type of vitamin D3 we have. It's liquid. It's flavorless. You can, I take it. Well, I, I, I say the minimum supplements everybody should be taking, of course, are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. There are two powders. I take a scoop of each every day. I can't imagine you not doing that. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Uh, it tastes great. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, the effects are just so long, long reaching, far reaching. And I put my five drops of D3 right in with my uh, super greens and essential source. Now, when you get your blood work done, 
I recommend you get your vitamin D levels tested because you don't want to go too high. Too high can be dangerous. But the recommended level is about, is it 30 nanograms per milliliter, 40 nanograms per milliliter? The, I don't think that's enough. I want you to go 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter in your blood. That's the level where we see a lot of positive studies coming out to help the body with immune system and viral infections. So 5,000 international units a day should be fine. Now, if you're out in the sun a lot um, and, you're out, and you don't shower right away, because if you're out in the sun, your body, the UVB rays interact with uh, cholesterol in your skin and create vitamin D, but then it has to be absorbed. So if you're out in the sun running the house and shower real quick, you're not going to be absorbing a lot of that vitamin D. You need to leave it on there for many hours, six, eight, ten hours. So I take it every day. Now, if I am out in the sun for a whole day or something like that, you know, you're only supposed to be out about 20 minutes or a half hour in the sun any, every day. Anyway, I may not take it that day. But if you're taking it, it is cumulative, and I strongly advise that you consider adding that to your uh, repertoire. So the minimum supplements, I always say, with super greens, essential source, and vitamin D. And study after study after study is coming out almost every day showing that vitamin D is so valuable for so many different things. This study showed the effects 80% of the children who took it saw an impact on their, a beneficial impact on their autistic symptoms. Vitamin C, some effects. Now, if you're taking super greens and essential source, you're eating a lot of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, uh, chances are you don't have to take vitamin C. Too much vitamin C is not good for you. When it comes to pretty much everything in life, you want to hit the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone is not too hard, not too soft, right in the middle. And that's what we want to be with our supplements as well. You can take too many supplements. You can take too many medications. You can take, drink too much water. You can exercise too much. You certainly can worry too much. So we want to get to the cause of the problems. And the way I look at it is if you have a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition, you have a plan to help get well. Now, if you have a health issue, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, car accident injuries, please come see us right away for car accidents. Stop suffering needlessly. In the Atlanta area, we have teams of doctors in, Mar in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. My doctors and I would love to be your doctors. So if you'd like to make an appointment, stop suffering, go to our website, drjoe.com. By the way, you can order supplements on the website too, drjoe.com, and make an appointment to come see us. The first visit is normally $712. For our listeners and, and anyone they refer, we've reduced that cost to $299. Now, that's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays on your follow-up visit, and a complete nutrition evaluation. The x-rays alone are going to cost you more than $299 anywhere else. So you're getting so much value because we want to know if you're a case that we think we can help. If we think we can help you, we're going to tell you, be prepared to continue with care if we think we can help you. Don't come in and be a tire kicker. And go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's great, it's wonderful, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Don't waste my time, don't waste yours. My doctors are extremely busy. So if you'd like to make an appointment, we'd love the opportunity to see you, drjoe.com. And we accept most insurances. And if you're ever in a car accident, if the car's damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen it any other way. So you need to come see us immediately for your health care, but also for the insurances. The insurance companies do everything they can to not pay bills. And so... That's their job, make money. Your job is to make sure you get your care covered, but because you have a policy. And you want to kind of avoid all the little pitfalls that they can throw out in front of you. So if you'd like to make an appointment, drjoe.com, we really want to see you. And bring your kids. Because kids have spines too. And if they have pinched nerves, bones out of place, muscle spasms, disc degeneration, curvature of the spine, we want to get working on that as quickly as possible. So if you're serious about wanting to get well, drjoe.com. And please, if you make an appointment, please show up. We're very busy. And if you make an appointment and don't show up, we reserve an hour for you. You took up that time. I want you to follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. Please do that. We post every single day. A couple of weeks ago, we gave away tickets to a live lecture. We give away concert tickets. We give away supplements sometimes. Drjoe.com is our website. At Dr. Joe Esposito is our uh, handle. And if you're a podcast junkie, do this. Go to your podcast service, type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. Hundreds of hours of podcasts. And on our website, drjoe.com, lots of podcasts there too. That was an exciting study on vitamin D and autism.
so thrilled when I read it. What you got? Well, you were talking about potatoes. I was. And uh, we're talking about seafood here. Okay. Well, when you mentioned tuna, somebody asked, uh, does the salmon have the same effect? Because salmon has so many benefits. So I'm going to talk about salmon and the oxidized cholesterol. In fact, I was going to say, what should I start the next show with? So I will talk about oxidized cholesterol and why salmon is the worst offender of all. And if you're going to do salmon, it has to be wild caught. If it's farm raised, it has very low omega-3 fatty acids. When you cook the salmon, those omega-3 fatty acids oxidize. So yes, it's high in omega-3s, but you're destroying the omega-3s when you cook it. So if you eat it raw, that's one thing, but then you're under risk, of course, of parasites and everything else. And fish, very high in mercury. Almost all fish are loaded with mercury in the whole world right now. So salmon doesn't really have a lot of benefits. Sorry to burst your bubble. But uh, they only did the study with tuna. But yeah, animal proteins will then sp- will raise that insulin re- reaction all the way across the board. So uh, I'm sure I'm going to say yes to salmon that it will raise that blood sugar. Okay. So I guess I'll start out with oxidized cholesterol, and then eating your pain away, and chemicals and food. So I don't know if I'll have enough time to cover all of them. But other questions? I'm sorry, I digress. Oh, also with the seafood, are fish or shrimp good to eat? No, not at all. Absolutely. No, shrimp. Are, I mean, even when Moses wrote Leviticus, like was book two of the Bible, I think it was, that was thousands of years ago. And Moses even said, don't eat shrimp. They're, they're bottom feeders. They're scavengers. And that's when the water was clean. The water's a lot dirtier now. So I would strongly advise you stay away from shellfish, or all fish, actually. But if you're going to eat it, it's got to be wild caught. But shellfish, there is no good shellfish. Sorry. I know. I like, I like shrimp, too. It's been 35 years since I've had them, but I like them. What else? I don't like shrimp. I call them the cockroaches of the sea. They are cockroaches. You don't like shrimp, though? That's like the flavor. I don't like cockroaches either. You don't like cockroaches. Roach on a half shell. Suck it right up. Mm. Uh, Best supplements and your thoughts about perimenopause. Uh, Go to our website, drjoe.com. Type in the words women's health issues. Uh, We've done shows on that. Uh, For perimenopause, obviously your estrogen level is dropping. So you want to stay away from, like on our website, we have a supplement called Estrogen Regulator, okay? Don't take that. That's for childbearing women and men. Uh, Don't take it. We do have a supplement called uh, Women's Hormone Support. I would recommend you take that. I would recommend Adrenal Support because the adrenal glands produce hormones. So Women's Hormone Support, Adrenal Support, of course, Super Green is an essential source. That goes without saying. Everybody should be taking that. Vitamin D, very important. But for you, I want you to stay. Did we do a show on menopause yet? Do you remember doing what, Joe? I believe we did that about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Okay, so type in menopause. Let's see if we have a show in there. Um, but staying away from animal proteins, again, makes that, that transition through perimenopause into menopause a whole lot easier. The animal proteins are just loaded with hormones. They mess with your body. So I would strongly say going to a plant-based diet, super greens essential source, women's hormone support, adrenal support, vitamin D, uh, and in most in chiropractic care, because the nerves in the low back control the uterus and the ovaries. And I've had a lot of women with, uh, even with menstrual cramps and perimenopause, menopause, adjusting the low back helped tremendously. So that's an easy one. What else? All right, with vitamin D, is there a best time to take that? I've, no. I've noticed with, well, at least with my child, that if he takes it like before bed, he usually doesn't sleep very well. Oh, interesting. Okay. No, I didn't know that. So Joe taught me something today. Uh, I take all my supplements in the morning. And with vitamin D, you want to take it with something that has a little bit of fat in it. Um, avocado, nuts, uh, because it's a, it's a fat-soluble supplement. It could be absorbed better with fat. But if Joe says it keeps kid awake at night, I'd say take it in the morning then. Oh, that's a case study of one. One. So. That's okay. Yes, but that's, that's all right. We can, we can blow up the headlines with that. And there is a menopause actually f- – from a month ago. Oh, I thought we did one recently. We yeah. did that. When the, I was thinking of the radio show. That was from a couple of years ago. Okay. That's also on there. So just type menopause in the search bar? Yep. The okay. video will be the uh, first result. There you go. There I am. All right. What else? Mm, let's see if that didn't scroll up. Yep. No. That Joe's covering uh, a lot of, lot, lot, lot of platforms here all at once. That looks to be it for the moment. All right. Well, because of you, you've motivated me. I will do my next segment on oxidized cholesterol, salmon, and Alzheimer's. 
Let me take a little sip of my hot tea here. I've been doing so many shows and lectures lately. God, I'm wearing myself out. That's all right. You need this information. I'll rest when I'm very old. <coughs> Ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am very happy that you're with us today. lot to cover. I want to get right into it. I'm going to start out by talking about cholesterol, oxidized cholesterol, and your brain. Specifically, we'll talk about Alzheimer's, but all brain function. Then we're going to talk about if you try to eat your pain away, why people with chronic pain actually usually gain weight and what we can do about that. And then uh, chemicals that are just blowing up your immune system. Uh, so many people come to me with immune questions pretty much, I would say every day, probably every hour, uh, with questions about the immune system. And so there's new research out on certain chemicals and even pots and pans that can be adversely affecting your immune system. So that's what we're going to cover today. If you ever have questions, you can always send them to me through my website, drjoe.com. So if you go to drjoe.com, any health question, not just about you know what we're covering today, but you go to drjoe.com, a little bot pops up. It says, hi, I want to chat. Type in your question, put in your email address. Please spell your email address correctly. I had somebody uh, a couple weeks ago get very mad at me. You didn't answer my questions. You say you answer every question and just tore me a new one. And I said, uh, I looked back and they had given me the wrong email address. And I sent it and it bounced back. So I can't fix that. And also check your spam file. Because every now and then somebody thinks that they're going to bully me a little bit. I love, uh, was it a... Uh, Keyboard, keyboard courage. And uh, don't bully me, folks. I'm doing this all for free. So, and I said, check your spam file. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 on and on and on. So I answer every question. Joe and I are very good about answering every question. So drjoe.com, you can send your questions there. Let me get into this oxidized cholesterol. You probably never heard that word before and why it's way worse than just eating raw cholesterol. So significant body of evidence indicates oxidized cholesterol, and it's – in a form called oxysterols, is one of the main triggers of Alzheimer's disease. Bam. How's that for an opening line? But that's not all. Cholesterol oxidation products, they're called COPs, cholesterol oxidation products, are associated with the initiation and progression of major chronic diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and kidney failure. So once again, we'll put this in the Dr. Joe was right column way back when. Gave the advice 40 years ago, give up animal products. 40 years later, studies are coming out every day showing why I was right. So these cholesterol oxidation products are produced when animal products are heated. And I've talked about this a while ago. When you heat something, you destroy enzymes, and enzymes are necessary for every function in your body. But now when you're heating it, the cholesterol is oxidizing. All forms of cooking can do this. Since you're getting maximum cholesterol oxidation uh, at only 300 degrees Fahrenheit, but some, ty some types of cooking may be worse than others, yes. Microwaving chicken or beef appears to produce twice as much cholesterol oxidation as frying. If you look at bacon, raw bacon doesn't have any oxidized cholesterol. Don't eat raw bacon. But we did the studies and we found this out. Like all animal products, it has cholesterol, but it's not oxidized until you cook it. Grilling seems to be the safest way of eating meat right away, which is strange because I'll tell you why I, don't, I like that idea. But if you put leftovers in the refrigerator, reheat them, this, uh, even using the same method, uh, the oxidation, uh, oxidized cholesterol skyrockets. Now, if you grill meat, you produce polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are the things that smell when you grill the meat, the things that smell so good. But it also produces something called heterocyclic amines. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and, and heterocyclic amines are both known carcinogens. So cooking the meat, again, oxidizes the cholesterol. The, the grilling of it produces these other chemicals that are known carcinogens. The meat itself is probably going to be loaded with steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, the cows and chickens are usually, if they're not organic, fed genetically modified foods. So there's a million reasons why I don't recommend you eat meat. But now we're looking at brain function and the cholesterol, the oxidized cholesterol that is linked now to Alzheimer's. So it's not just the heat. Levels of raw meats, the, all levels in raw meats of the oxidized cholesterol are usually low. 
but their concentrations tend to increase dramatically after exposure to something as simple as light. So you can't just crawl inside the pig and eat from the inside out. I think that would be pretty gross. Isn't meat always exposed to light? Yeah. But you could wrap it in a red film. And they did studies on this, and they wrapped the meat in red film, and it seemed to work better than the clear plastic. It, it blocks the light waves, and it delays the cholesterol oxidation. And the, the study they did it on, which is kind of weird, is on horse meat slices. Now, why they use horse meat slices, I have no idea. The problem is worse with sliced meats because there's more surface area. And then ground meat is actually substantially worse still. I'm not a big fan of ground meat because many times they'll, if there's one sick cow in this whole big vat of cows, they grind it all together and they spread out the sickness. Also, you create more what, what's called surface area. When you grind the meat, there's a lot of surface area. And that surface area allows oxidation, allows viruses, germs, bacteria, pathogens get into the meat. So just from a mechanical standpoint, the ground meat is less healthy. The problem is when you slice the meat, you grind it up, you expose it to all these toxic chemicals, and then now light is oxidizing the cholesterol. But the question I had about this study was, all right, uh, he, light's going to oxidize the cholesterol. As soon as you cook it, you're going to oxidize the cholesterol. So it's really that important to wrap it in red film. It's probably important, more important not to do it, not to eat it is even better. So if you vacuum pack it, oxygen exposure alone – uh, lowers, and that could be a, 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 a somewhat benefit to lowering the oxidized cholesterol. If you freeze it, another thing, it will oxidize cholesterol. Cooking raw fish can boost cholesterol levels about, to about uh, 8 micrograms per gram. And if, if you freeze it, it can go up to 18. So anything you do to the meat is going to start to oxidize that cholesterol. So in terms of which meat is worse, chicken was twice as bad as beef, whether it was microwaved or fried. So people say, well, Dr. Joe, I don't eat. I love this one. I get this every day. Hey, Dr. Joe, I don't eat meat. I said, really? No animal products? Oh, no, I eat chicken. I said, I've never seen a chicken bush. I don't know. I've seen an eggplant. Get it? Ah, it's a joke. But people say chicken is not meat. Fish is not meat. Uh, pork is not meat. I don't know what they consider that. So white meat is more susceptible to cholesterol oxidation. Red meat has more saturated fat, but fish and chicken tend to build up more oxidized cholesterol. So chicken and roasted salmon, somebody asked a question about salmon, chicken and roasted salmon have shown to generate the greatest amount of cholesterol oxidation products than other types of meat. Surprisingly, though, the highest increase in oxidation cholesterol in salmon was found when you steamed it probably because it was exposed to heat for a longer period of time. So once again, it's heat plus time causing the damage. Cholesterol oxidation increased after, cooking, uh, uh, after all cooking procedures, but steaming increased by more than 1,000%. Another problem we have with oxidized cholesterol in animal products is that when the chickens are fed rancid fats, those rancid fats get into the body, into the chicken. And if you ultra-pasteurize milk, and that's using like half and half, the no-refrigeration coffee creamers and stuff like that, boost oxidized cholesterol level by 50%. Eggs, egg powder, same thing. So if you stay away from eggs, uh, that can be a, a good thing, of course. I'm not a big fan of eggs, but when they make egg powder, so if they add eggs to like baking goods and stuff like that, that's even worse. So one thought came up, of course, why don't we just feed the animals antioxidants to reduce the oxidation? Uh, that seemed to work. But now you're feeding the animals cherries, sage, garlic to reduce the oxidation levels, but that's expensive. So once again, we don't know we're going to get Alzheimer's until we get Alzheimer's, and then we don't even know we have Alzheimer's. So we might want to consider taking care of our bodies now as opposed to waiting till later and saying, now I have a problem. As you get older, you have friends that are dying. You have friends that have chronic diseases. Maybe you have a chronic disease. I've had uh, someone die in my arms. I watched my best friend die of cancer. And very sad. So everyone I've ever known that are in their golden years or toward end of life, they all say the same thing. I wish I didn't do what I did. 
I wish I'd taken better care of myself. I wish that I didn't worry so much about saving money. I didn't want to take that supplement because it was expensive. I didn't want to go to that doctor because I couldn't afford it. At the end of life, you leave. People fight over your money, destroys families, uh, it ruins relationships, and you could have taken better care of yourself. So there's no better time than now to start taking care of yourself because there'll come a time, I promise, if it's not there already, there'll come a time where you'll say, wow, had I done this, I wouldn't be in the situation I'm in right now. So the way you get healthy, it's not hard. There's three things you have to have in order to obtain and maintain good health. That would be a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. If you make that your top priority, everything else in life is going to be easier. Relationships, businesses, families, uh, work, everything changes when you're healthy. So if you take better care of yourself, you're able to better take care of everything else and everyone else around you. So how do you know you have a nervous system issue? Well, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, that's obvious that there's something wrong with the nervous system. But 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You can have a pinched nerve or a malfunctioning nerve and not know it. For example, you don't feel your blood pressure. It's controlled by nerves. You don't feel your colon, your spleen, your kidneys, your immune system. It's controlled by nerves. So my concern with you is not only the nerves that feel pain, our team of doctors, we check the 90% that don't feel pain. Because if we take you on as a patient, we don't want to get you out of pain. We want to get you well. And that's kind of my mantra. I don't want to get you out of pain. I want to get you well. Naturally, I want to get you well and keep you well. So if you have a health issue, come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctor. Let's check the nervous system. Let's look at your digestive system. Do you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation? These are warning signs. They're telling you something's wrong. Don't ignore them. And if you do, well, the problem's going to get worse, like a fire alarm going off, and you don't do anything about it. Well, the fire's going to keep burning if you ignore it. So if you have digestive issues, if you have pain, come see us. Let's see if there's something we can do. Many times, your stomach pushes up against your diaphragm. If the stomach is up against the diaphragm, you might have acid reflux or heartburn, chronic cough, sinus congestion. The acid can come all the way up into your sinuses and into your throat. Somebody I work with is retiring because he had esophageal cancer. The acid had gotten up from his stomach into his esophagus, and he had to have surgery, and now he's going to have to retire, unfortunately, and a great man. So take care of things now. If you want to come see us, you can make an appointment right online, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. Book it online. Call us. Uh, we're more than happy to book your appointment for you. For initial visits, for most people, the exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation, we charge $712. For our listeners and anyone they refer, we've reduced that to $299. I know that's crazy. The x-rays alone will cost you more than $299 anywhere else. So let's come in. Let's do an evaluation. Let's find out what's going on. If we find that we think we can help you, no promises. If we think we can help you, we're going to want to continue care right away. So we accept almost every insurance out there. We'll verify it for you. We'll do the filing for you. We accept Medicare, uh, Ambetter, uh, car accident cases. We want to be your doctors. We're going to make it as easy as possible to be your doctors. So make an appointment right now, drjoe.com. Stop suffering needlessly. I really hate to see people suffer. And one of the things that happens when people are, come to us, uh, the number one reason we see patients is pain. Number two is digestive issues is patients are in pain for a long period of time, they start to gain weight. They gain weight, and that makes their pain worse, so then it goes into a cycle. Recent study reveals the area of the brain involved in regulating feeding behavior is impacted when there is chronic presence of pain. The findings may explain why people with chronic pain experience weight gains. This is why my team of doctors and I are very good, in most cases, of getting people out of pain. People say, I want to lose weight. Well, we have to get your brain working because, again, it's the feeding centers of the brain that we have to deal with. Chronic pain activates them and makes you hungry. Scientists say that the neurons involved in communicating a person's motivation and pleasure are affected when someone experiences pain. 
So eating is a very pleasurable experience, should be. And so if that's being affected, you may eat abnormally. These findings reveal new psychological mechanisms linking chronic pain to a change in somebody's eating habits, and this change can lead to development of obesity. So in this study, they looked at the brain's response after eating foods high in sugar and fat. Participants ate gelatin dessert and pudding, with the researchers changing the amount of sugar, fat, and food texture to, for certain groups. They found no changes in eating behavior for, 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 with participants who ate desserts high in sugar, so just sugar. They noticed a change in behavior for people who ate more desserts high in fat. So the fat was the thing that got these people. Participants with acute low back pain who later recovered, so short-term low back pain, did not enjoy their pudding as much as participants without pain. Okay, so initially, they kind of shut it down. But over time, participants who recovered from back pain were more likely to have impairments of getting signals to their brain saying they're full. Signals your digestive system is getting from your stomach to your brain. And the participants with acute low back pain, whose pain lasted more than one year, they're the ones that had the problems. Research, researchers observed that participants with chronic low back pain eventually had trouble limiting food high in fat and carbohydrates, such as ice cream co and cookies. Additional brain scans confirmed that these groups developed issues with the signals that make them feel full. So if you're in pain for a long period of time, you have trouble mon uh, monitoring your food, and you start to crave those high-sugar, high-fat foods. So the brain, brain scans talked about the nucleus acubens, my favorite part of the brain, and that's involved in decision-making, reward behavior, and feeding was smaller in participants whose eating behavior was normal, uh, but those whose pain became chronic. So what that's saying is it affected the nucleus acubens, and the nucleus acubens is your pleasure center. And so if you're in chronic pain, you start to eat more to stimulate that pleasure center to try to make you feel good, is what bottom line of all that testing and research said. So if you're a chronic pain patient, I want you to consider something. I want you to consider trying to get to the cause of your pain and not just treating the symptoms. And that's what my team of doctors are really good at. Now, we can't fix everybody. Had a patient come in the other day. He was going to another chiropractor. He'd come in. He said, get his neck cracked, as he said, whenever he felt like it. So we took x-rays on him, and the x-rays were just terrible. And I said, you really need to get under regular treatment plans. He goes, nah, I just come in when I need to. All right. Can't change people. I can only tell them what they need. So he comes in, and he's holding his arm up, and his head is cocked to the side, shooting pain down his arm. I said, you need an MRI. You might have a ruptured disc. Nah, I'm fine. I'm fine. It just, just give me a few, a few adjustments. I'll be fine. So I adjusted him, and I said, you need an MRI. And he argued with me. I'm not going to get an MRI. I just need a few adjustments. That always fixed it in the past. So I know what's going to happen with this guy. The pain is going to get substantially worse. He's going to eventually give in and go get an MRI. We're going to find a swollen disc, and then we're going to have to get some medical intervention. I know this. I wish I could say that I can cure this guy. This guy's too far gone. He should have kept his appointments like he was supposed to way back when. He should have maintained his health, and he didn't. He has a horrible diet, self-professed, self, uh, and he's got problems. So don't wait till you get to that point. I teach my doctors, don't be a taint-nothing doctor. Taint-nothing means, ah, I got headaches, but it taint nothing. I don't like people that are taint-nothings because usually it leads to something a lot worse. So if you'd like to become a patient, let's get it fixed now. All right, before I wrap this thing up, chemicals found in 1,200 foods linked to immune system damage. Chemical preservatives, and two of them specifically, one is called TBHQ, and you'll see that listed on your ingredients, and the other one is polyfluoroalkyls, and these are called PFAs, have, I be, have been identified in more than 1,200 foods sold in the United States. So TBHQ, it's a preservative. It's in a lot of popular foods. If I listed the list here, I won't use brand names. I promise you, you probably have some in your pantry right now. These are called, and PFAs, these are uh, uh, chemicals. They're called forever chemicals. Forever chemicals because they survive indefinitely and often used to, and the PFAs are used to create nonstick lining in not only pots and pans, aluminum cans, pizza boxes, uh, popcorn bags, Anything that is not going to be sticky. Now, 
if you remember years ago, if you ordered a pizza and the pizza would stick to the sides of the pizza box sometimes, well, it doesn't happen as much anymore. Why? The pizza boxes are lined with PFAs. It's, uh, it's nonstick. Very dangerous to the immune system. Two chemicals found in popular food, uh, food uh, goods are linked to lower immune system functions in this new study. So in one statement, it's Dr. Olga, I'm going to say Nadin, Nadinko. It's the Environmental Working Group's Vice President for Science Investigations, suggested that poor diets may contribute to the severity of the worldwide viral infection. Now, we heard about this, right? Worldwide viral infection went on a while ago. And the pandemic was focused on public and scientific attention on environmental factors uh, that put impact on the immune system. So what they're saying is that now that we had this worldwide uh, pandemic, we're saying, what else can we do to keep the immune system strong? And a lot of scientists are crying out, hey, look at the environment. Look at the food you're exposing your body to. Look at the chemicals you're exposing your body to. Let's build a healthier society and not just treat the symptoms, but actually get to the cause. So there's thousands of different types of PFAs, 600 of them. The uh, EPA has confirmed for use in manufacturing and they have long-term health effects. The study's authors point out that animal studies are not always consistent with human studies, and they call for further research. But the problem is this. The findings, according to the Food and Drug Administrations, are not yet evidence enough to in, in, uh, enact stricter limitations. Instead, the FDA continues to allow companies to self-determine whether additives and preservatives used in their manufacturers are safe for long-term use. So we have the fox minding the hen house. So we have to say, okay, your, 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 supple, your additive safe? We think so. All right, let us know if that changes. So this is another reason why I feel it's important that you get educated, that you understand the ramifications of what you're doing to your body every single day, the food you eat, the environment you're in, how you treat your physical body. I had an issue the other day. I had a, I changed my air filter in my car. And the guy came out from the auto parts store, put the new air filter in, closed it up, walked away. I started my car. My engine light came on. There was a problem. I didn't know what it was. I went back to the auto parts store the next day, and he said, wasn't us. Wasn't us. I said, I didn't even tell you what it was yet. And when he put the air filter in, one of the hoses came loose, and it was affecting the airflow into my engine. So I went in there. I tightened the hose. I put it back in. And I reset my engine light, and it worked fine. I got to the cause of the problem. The engine light coming on was a warning sign. The engine light wasn't the problem. The engine light was telling me something's wrong. I looked under the hood. He denied doing anything. I saw what he did. I fixed it. Everything was fine. So I want you to think about that with your health. If you have symptoms, headaches, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, uh, nausea, vomiting, acid reflux, heartburn, diarrhea, constipation, erectile dysfunction, fungus, swelling. These are all symptoms. They're the engine light coming on. Something's wrong. So if you want to come see us, and let's do an evaluation. Let's try to get to the cause of your problem. You can go to our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com, and you can book an appointment right online. We have four offices listed. Click on the office, book it right there, or call us, and we'll set you up a time to come in. The initial visit is normally $712. We've reduced that to $299. Uh, the x-rays alone on that first visit will cost you more than $299 anywhere else. So we're going to do a spinal evaluation, digestive evaluation, nutrition evaluation, supplement evaluation, and let's find out what's going to be best, in our opinion, for you to obtain and maintain good health. Follow us on social media at Dr. Joe Esposito. We post a lot of good information. We have a lot of free giveaways. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And if you're a nurse practitioner who would like to work with us, send us your resume. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. All right, we covered it all. I didn't think I was going to get to it all today. Any questions for part D? I'm guessing you don't eat pudding. Uh, I haven't had pudding in a long time. Yeah, you can't uh, have you can't have pudding until you eat your meat. That's right. <laughs> oh, Joe, get me with a Pink Floyd quote there. Make All sure, right. Make sure Ahmad plays that if you talk about it. That's a good one. I actually like that one. Yeah. All right.
Any questions for part you? Uh, somebody had a question. They might have missed uh, missed you talking about it. Can you take vitamin D with super greens and essential source? Absolutely. Should be the law. When I become Grand Poo by the universe, I'm going to lay down some real simple laws. Everybody needs to get their spine checked. Everybody needs to get on supplements. Everybody needs to eat a good diet. Stop eating bad stuff. Most of our problems in the world are going to go away. So, What else? And when you were talking about, uh, I guess, all the animals that can't eat, somebody's commented, all, all you can eat is salad. That's all I've eaten in 35 years. I am so damn hungry right now. No, if you don't know what to eat, there's about, I'm guessing, about 120,000 foods you can eat. So if you go to our website, drjoe.com, I, my first book I ever wrote is called Eating Right for the Health of It. We have it as a soft, as a, you know, a soft copy, and we also have it as a PDF. And we can send that to you. It's for purchase. Uh, if you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com, and for free, type in, so what can I eat, and listen to the show we did on what you can eat. And that gives you a great list of breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, everything else. So, no, there's plenty of food. I haven't missed a meal in 35 years. Anywhere in the world I've been, I've not missed a meal. So, what else? Uh, what if I can't absorb iron and vitamin D? Then we got to find out why you can't absorb iron and vitamin D. So vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. We might want to add a little fat to your diet, maybe an avocado when you take it. Um, if you can't absorb iron, we need to find out why that is. You need to look at your digestive system. Uh, your stomach uh, produces uh, nutri- uh, chemicals to help you absorb your, your iron. Um, so we got to figure out why your stomach isn't working. So get to the cause. Not the symptoms. All right. What are your thoughts on protein drinks? And they're looking for a best recommendation. No need for them. Um, Most of us get enough protein. We get more than enough protein, actually. So uh, you don't need a protein drink. If you're going to do a protein drink, make sure it's organic proteins. Uh, Chia seed, hemp seed, those are fine. Again, you don't need them. But if you're going to do them, because I've learned two things in my life. Don't argue with women. Don't argue with patients. And I've never won an argument either way. So if you insist on taking protein drinks, it's got to be an organic plant-based protein drink, uh, but they're not necessary. Chia seed, hemp seed, those would be better choices. No milk or whey or dairy or anything like that. What else? All right. So do we take insurance for the first-time visits? Uh, you have to call the office and find out because some insurances don't cover the first visit. Some insurances don't cover x-rays. The insurance just makes stuff up. I mean, they really do. It's just such a scam. So you'd have to call the office uh, and 844-44-DR-JOE, uh, ask the staff. Normally, we don't accept the first visit. We have you cover that. Then we'll bill your insurance. And if they pay us back, we'll pay you back because we got tired of being stiffed. And then the patient said, well, it's my insurance's fault. No, it's the fault that you picked the bad insurance. So we do it that way. We'll bill the insurance. If we get paid, we refund the money to you. So. What else? Now that is it for questions, but since you mentioned vitamin D, yes. there is a coupon for vitamin D this month. Use D3MAY when you check out at drjoe.com. That'll get you 10% off of vitamin D3 with K2. Huh? D3MAY, right? Got it. D3MAY, okay. all one word, all lowercase. Joe sneaks in these coupons on me every now and then. You know, he likes spending my money. So, All right, anything else? Uh, no. All right, drjoe.com. Any questions, send them that way. See you next week.